Will your child's school get enough money? Hear today's arguments before the Kansas Supreme Court. A bird's eye view that could mean a safer drive for you. See what highway officials are testing. Plus, find out if rising gas prices are putting the brakes on holiday travel plans. Good evening, I'm Melissa Bruner. And I'm Ralph Hipp in Manhattan tonight. Several fire agencies are on the scene. They're responding to a fire at the campus of K-State tonight. This was an alert that went out around 4.30 this afternoon. Kansas State University said crews were headed to the Hale Library, where there were reports smoke was coming from the building. The library was evacuated. We have some photos just in from the scene. The university is asking everyone to stay clear of this area around Hale Library. Multiple fire crews from Manhattan and Fort Riley are reported to be on the scene. Again, this is a developing situation, and we will provide updates as they're available on WIBW.com. The other big story is from the Kansas Supreme Court. The state is saying lawmakers have done their job and funded public schools, but the schools say the state has fallen short again. The arguments presented to the Supreme Court justices this morning. 13 Sean Wheat was in the courtroom mm -hmm. and is here to recap what was said. Well, Melissa, Ralph, the state says that lawmakers have met their constitutional requirements providing a sustainable education, but, but the school districts say, that is, that children aren't getting what they're promised. We ask that this court dismiss this case and allow the school funding formula to operate as it's intended. Solicitor General Toby Krause told justices that the $500 million funding package phased in over the next five years is adequate to fund schools, but justices were skeptical. You're funding today's number five years from now, right? I believe it, that's correct. The, Why? The five years. How does that make sense? Montoy 4 was the target of 522. What the legislature did is it actually expended more money than what the target was. Alan Roop, who represents the school, said a study lawmakers paid for showed the state should add $2 billion. Roop says the legislature ignored it, so now the court should give them a specific dollar figure. They're asking for it. All you have to do is tell them what is necessary. I think it's in everybody's interest to have dismissal. Now, obviously, there's a disagreement as to whether now is the appropriate time. We think it is. Uh, the plaintiffs think it's not, and the court will decide. The state also argued that if lawmakers don't come up with the funding or have adequate funding, someone can file a future lawsuit. Now, you can actually read up on this entire story. We have court reporter Steve Fry's story on our website. That's at WIBW.com. You'll be able to even watch the video from today's proceedings. A lot happened, a lot to digest, Sean, thanks. Of course, the big question is what happens next? There are several options. The court hasn't said when it would rule. They did earlier set a June 30th deadline to have acceptable funding in place. Now, they could find that this meets their order and everything goes forward. But if they strike down the law, they could order lawmakers to make an immediate fix, and that could possibly mean a special session or even cutting money off from schools if they don't end up meeting the deadline or they could let some of the law take effect or all of the law take effect and impose a new deadline so they could address it next legislative session. We will be following that, Ralph. With all those options still on the table, Melissa, thank you. Shawnee County District Attorney Mike Kage telling me he'll decide by the end of the week whether to pursue a new trial in a double murder case. Kage appeared with me on Eye on Northeast Kansas telling Melissa and me his staff continues reviewing the case against Dana Chandler. The woman accused of killing her former husband Michael Sisko and his fiance Karen Harkness in 2002. The state Supreme Court overturned the convictions that had come a decade later, saying the prosecutor in the case had knowingly given false information to the jury. Kage says his office has a lot to consider in moving forward. You meet with the initial investigative team, we've done that. Uh, you meet with a current investigator, see if there's any follow-up that needs to be done. We've done that. Uh, we actually reached out to the uh, jurors, the original jurors who served in the case. We have an ethical duty, independent and apart from anything else, to evaluate the evidence and to make that determination, the evidence as it is today. The case was also profiled on CBS's 48 Hours. A May 30th hearing is set for Judge Nancy Parrish to consider Dana Chandler's request that she recuse herself and for Dana Chandler to represent herself. 
A judge has found probable cause for a Californian to go on trial. Allegations he made that hoax call, leading police to fatally shoot an unarmed man here in Kansas. 25-year-old Tyler Barris is accused of calling police from Los Angeles the 28th of December. He had reported a shooting and kidnapping at a house in Wichita. So police converged and stormed on that address. An officer shot Andrew Finch at his front door. Barris is facing the charges of involuntary manslaughter, giving a false alarm, interfering with a law officer. He had engaged in swatting, a practice in which someone makes a false report, that phony phone call, to get emergency responders to respond to an address. Wichita Police Officer Justin Rapp testified he'd been assigned to provide cover for the responding officers when they all got there. Rapp says he fired one shot because he feared that Andrew Finch had been reaching for a weapon. Tyler Barris will be arraigned the 29th of June, about a month from now. A Kansas Highway Patrol trooper was involved in a wreck in Pottawatomie County this afternoon. A viewer sent us this brief glimpse of the wreck they caught on video. This happened just after 2.30 on Highway 24 near Rockingham Road. That's between Manhattan and Wamego. KHP says the trooper was on the shoulder of the eastbound side of the highway. He pulled out to attempt to stop a car that had passed and ended up colliding with a westbound vehicle as it was trying to turn left in front of him. We are told that the trooper's lights were not yet on. He was in the process of turning them on. The trooper was not hurt. The woman in the vehicle was taken to the hospital to be evaluated for injuries. A man with ties to the Topeka area was killed in a cougar attack Saturday in Washington state. Friends on a to the Friends on Bikes website say S.J. Brooks says he was born in Kansas and had fond memories riding on the Shunga Trail as a child. Brooks is a former Boston University student, also a former member of the school's visual arts team. According to Washington State authorities, Brooks and another biker were attacked by a 100-pound mountain lion while biking on a remote trail. First responders had to euthanize the animal once it was found by authorities on top of Brooks. They knew where to find the animal because a second cyclist was able to pedal away from the attack. Officials say the cougar was leaner than normal. They will test the animal to see if perhaps it had a health problem which led to the attack. Cougar attacks are rare. It's the first time a human's been killed by a cougar in Washington state since 1924. We're hoping for as much springtime weather as we can get. It appears, Melissa, and it feels like summer is arriving early. Jeremy Goodwin is outside on the weather deck to let us know if we keep it warm for the holiday weekend. Hi, Ralph Melissa. It seemed like all of April was still winter. It seemed like yesterday was spring, and we've gone right back to the summer pattern that uh, we've enjoyed, enjoyed most of May so far. And the summertime temperatures will last into the upcoming Memorial Day weekend. Right now outside, we have sunny skies overhead, temperatures in northeast Kansas deep into the 80s. This is some 5 to 8, eight degrees above average for this time of the year. What's a peak of currently 85 degrees? Concordia right now is 87, and Hiawatha is 86. We have no precipitation in northeast Kansas right now, likely to stay dry through the evening hours. Uh, probably seeing a few isolated rain showers pop up in the heat of the afternoon tomorrow. Severe weather not likely, but a few scattered showers could pop up in the area again during the heat of the day on uh, Wednesday. Likely to stay hot on Thursday and Friday as well. Temperatures chasing 90 every day into the holiday weekend too. I think it will be dry on Sunday and Memorial Day. And your full eight-day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Jeremy Goodwin. Back to him shortly. No actual council meeting tonight, but the City Council of Topeka hosting a town hall meeting this evening, talking over an increased extension of the half-cent sales tax. 13's Tiernan Shank is live for us. She's at the Law Enforcement Center with what that could mean for the city's infrastructure. Tiernan? Ralph, the current 10-year half-cent sales tax expires in October 2019, but it could be back on the ballot in November, begging the question, will the people of Topeka support it? Many are trying to decide tonight. The funds go to street improvements in Topeka. Topeka City officials want to extend it for another 10 years and increase it to three quarters of a percent. City officials say the tax needs to increase to three quarters in order to meet the council's goal to improve pavement conditions. The city would need an extra $1 million a year to make the proper improvements, plus add sidewalks, curbs, and gutters. If you'd like to make a comment, there's still time. The meeting goes until about 7.30 tonight. I'll have the latest and reactions from people within the meeting tonight on 13 News at 10. Ralph, back to you. And thank you for the update on that, and we'll see at 10 how that story is developing. On to the state roads, the Kansas Department of Transportation is testing new technology that could make the drive safer for you. They are trying out unmanned aircraft to survey land. 13's Juan Cisneros found out how this bird's eye view can help. Juan? 
Melissa Wayne Scritchfield with Kirkham Michael says the technology used in the EB drone is specifically designed for land surveying. He says it will not only be more efficient, but safer as well. Kirk and Michael, based out of Ellsworth, Kansas, teamed up with KDOT to showcase what their drone can provide for future projects. The EB by SenseFly is a programmable drone that can survey land, stitching together images to provide a three-dimensional model. It's a fixed-wing aerial um, drone. It uh, flies at about 30 miles an hour, We're capable of throwing, flying at about 30 miles an hour. Uh, it will take still photography from an elevation of about 350 feet. Tuesday, the crew flew over Highway 75 near Netawaka. The two-lane stretch has seen several wrecks, and KDOT is studying potential improvements like turn lanes. The drone could help with getting information quicker, so decisions and safety improvements could happen sooner. We will have about an hour and a half of flight time in this project. That would take weeks to do the same amount of work um, using conventional methods. The technology provides a safer and more efficient way of scanning surfaces for road projects. The largest advantage of the drone technology is that we don't have to put people in the highway, so it's a safety factor that we can keep workers out of the highway and out of the way of traffic for both the traveling public and for the workers themselves. KDOT will review the accuracy of the drone in hopes that they will be able to use it more going forward. Cool. Thank you, and we want to check in uh, the Hale Library fire on the K-State campus. Our Ann Olamiju is there. Right, this happened about 4.30 this afternoon. You can see fire crews remain on the scene. We're told crews from Manhattan and Fort Riley were both involved. They do ask you to avoid this area. Again, a reported fire in the Hale Library on K-State's campus. That is their main library. We'll keep you updated on any developments on WIBW.com. Still ahead, you will find out who our newly crowned scholar athletes are. That was fun to see the okay. ceremonies. And okay. just in time for the Memorial Day weekend, okay. so gasoline good. prices Done. respond in a major okay. way. Back in a moment. All right. You're watching 13 News at 6 with Melissa Bruner and Ralph Hipp. 13 News, Kansas News Leader. Take you up 280 feet to learn the ins and outs of a wind turbine. Beyond that is the rotor, which is where the blades connect and the turbine turns. How they create energy to power your home. Tonight on 13 News at 10. You're watching 13 News, Kansas News Leader. Gas prices are on the rise, but it's not expected to keep people off the roads for the Memorial Day weekend. Now let's get that story from 13 Cecilia Jenkins, and Cecilia has a few tips and advice on how to save at the pump. Cecilia, what did you find out? $2.77 is the average gas price in the state right now, and many people told me today they may look for alternative ways to travel and save gas. Drivers are paying 50 cents a gallon more at the pump than this time last year. Right now in Kansas is 277. The prices are significantly lower than in 2013 when we paid $3.86 a gallon, but some are still shocked by the spike. A little bit surprising um, and something that I'm not too prepared for, but something I, I kind of just have to get through. Definitely hurts the old pocketbook. Yeah. I like it when it's a lot cheaper, so, oh, yeah. yeah. Jennifer Hall with AAA says a number of things affect gas prices, such as increasing demand, especially during holiday travel. About four and a half million in our area of the country um, that'll be on the road or in the skies. Mostly, um, they will be on the road. Uh, a lot of people taking road trips this time of year. Summer also brings a different type of fuel. You have the switch over to summer blend, so that usually um, tips the price up a little bit for a little while at the beginning of the summer. As pump prices tick up, some are looking for ways to save. I try not to drive as much as possible, to be honest with you. Start riding a motorcycle. Hall says the best way to save is to pay attention to your car. Just keeping that maintenance up makes a huge difference on your fuel economy. Now here are a few other tips to keep in mind. Stick to the speed limit, check your tire pressure regularly, and replace your air filter. Okay. Cecilia, thank you for the advice on that. I'd remind everybody, by the way, Topeka Metro has its dump the pump day, June 21st, where people could just ride the bus if they don't want to pay that price for gasoline. Something else going up, Melissa, are our temperatures. Right. Jeremy Goodwin has your forecast into the holiday weekend. See if your plans will be dry next. This is your 13 weather forecast with Jeremy Goodwin. 
Hot day temperatures more typical for the middle of June. Green car for the People's Insurance Group Road Risk Index. No chance of rain this evening in Northeast Kansas. If you have any plans to travel across the area, any errands you have to get done, it will be dry through this evening. Also, pl plenty of sunshine looking outside from Emporia now. The ValueNet fiber camera there and sunshine in Topeka as well, looking from the Jayhawk Tower to the northwest. It's 85 in Topeka, 88 in Clay Center. Clay Center was 90 last hour, so it's been a warm day, especially for this time in uh, late May. Winds out of the southeast, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Yesterday we saw winds from the northwest much today kept the temperature down and the humidity, but today the humidity is back and the temperatures that feel like the middle of summer are back too. Looking way out in western Kansas, we do have a line of thunderstorms that's developed there. None of this is severe at this point, but that line of storms making its way eastward late tonight could affect areas like Beloit. Uh, Jewel Mitchell County is likely to see some of the rain out of this during the during the wee hours of the morning. Not impossible to see that rain get to Washington County or even Cloud County by 4 or 4.30 a.m., but the vast majority of our area should be out of that rain chance. This is supercast going through 4.30 in the morning, rolling it ahead all the way to 8 a.m. Uh, for the bus stop and the commute to work. Uh, no rain in our area then. Tonight's forecast lows mid 60s. Tomorrow will be hot, humid again, almost identical to what we had today. Southeast winds at a 10 to 15, so the temperature and the wind direction are the same. The difference is going to be a chance of seeing some ice and rain showers developing from 1 to 3 p.m. and uh, lasting into the early evening, kind of heat of the afternoon, uh, thunder showers possible. Not everybody seeing rain, not widespread, kind of a shotgun pattern, if you will, across the area, just hit or miss uh, spots of moderate to heavy rain. About 8 o'clock when the sun starts to set, they go away. Thursday, almost the same timing on this, will be dry in the morning, uh, dry through about 1, and by 3 o'clock, again, heat of the day, uh, afternoon pop-up thunder showers possible. So mid-60s tonight, upper 80s tomorrow, very much like a August or July day with those afternoon thunder showers possible in the heat of the day. Not a widespread issue of any severe weather. Hail size of a nuclear quarter, probably worst case. And we're drying hot for Memorial Day weekend. We are. On the way is very exciting. Last hour, Melissa, we're going to check in on our scholar athlete, our honors held right here at Channel 13, who's bringing home those $2,500 scholarship. Also on the college level, which local athletes were earning honors from the Big 12. Next in 13 Sports. 13 Sports with Chris Lilly. Hello everyone, it was a special day here at WIBW TV. We held our second ever Scholar Athlete of the Year banquet to honor our scholar athletes and their accomplishments throughout the year. Around 80 people were here to celebrate 30 local student athletes for their great years in their sports and studies. And the grand finale was with DL Smith Electric and Cobb Valley Bank drawing two names for two scholarships, each worth $2,500. Highland Park's Will White was the first to hear his name called. He gets a check to help with next year at Fort Hayes State where he'll play football. And our next scholar athlete chosen was Seaman High School's Macy Smith. She will be playing soccer going to school at Hutchinson Community College next year. So congratulations to them. With the regular season officially over, it's time to hand out some Big 12 baseball awards. Northeast Kansas was well represented. K-State sophomore Will Brennan follows up his all-of-freshman American team honors last year with an all-Big 12 first-team selection this year. Brennan led the Wildcats in batting average, on-base percentage, hits, doubles, and he had the fourth-best batting average in the conference, which was 359. And here's the cr crazy part. He struck out just 11 times in 220 at-bats. And his teammate Drew Mount earned honorable mention. KU sophomore Ryan Zephyrjohn earned all Big 12 second team honors. After winning eight games and striking out 98 hitters this year, Zephyrjohn was tied for first in the conference in wins, and he was second in strikeouts, third in innings pitched, and fourth in opponents' batting average, and ninth in ERA. Five other Jayhawks earned all Big 12 honorable mention. And sticking with the awards season, Washburn's Brady Skeens is, Skeens is one of five finalists for the MIAA's Ken B. Jones Award, which is given to the conference top male and female student athletes. This past season, Skeens became just the eighth Ichabod to average a double-double for the season, something he did three times in his career. As a senior, Skeens led all of Division II with a 72.2 field goal percentage. And he's a three-time MIAA Defensive Player of the Year. Skeens finished his career as the program's all-time leader in blocked shots with 242 and third all-time in rebounds with 990. And also the Royals, they're about to start their series, our second game of the series against the Cardinals here right after 7 o'clock. Yeah, 7.15 and then uh, just after noon tomorrow. Thank you, Chris. Awesome. We'll get a look back at the weather to see what the temps have in store for your holiday plans next. 
We are expecting to see a hot day again tomorrow, 88 degrees. A few pop up thunder showers possible from 1 o'clock until 8 o'clock would be the time frame for that. Still upper 80s, hot and humid through Friday. We're dry with sunshine and highs near 90 all the way through Memorial Day weekend. Alrighty, well, two weeks without Abby and the season finale of NCIS is coming up tonight. Stay tuned for that. We have yeah. the, the Wheel of Fortune is coming up next and we'll see you back here at 10. Get the latest news, weather, and sports at WIBW.com or follow WIBW on Twitter, Facebook, and our mobile app. Thank you for making 13 News the most watched evening newscast.